Hi, my name is Judy Reven. I'm from the University of Colorado School of Medicine in uh, Denver, Colorado, USA. Um, I'm happy to be here and talking about our group treatment for children with autism and anxiety. I'd like to thank my co-authors, uh, our funding agencies, Autism Speaks and Cure Autism Now, as well as the families and children that we've been working with. Okay, so why study anxiety and autism? Well, we want to study it for four main reasons. One is because it's commonly occurring in our population. Two, it interferes with functioning across the board. So if you're anxious or if you work with kids that are anxious, you know that it affects kids in their home, in their school, and in their community. We also know that children who are anxious without treatment may persist as anxious adults. So without treatment, we think these, these children with autism at, their, and their anxiety might persist into adulthood. And the fourth and most pr uh, biggest reason we want to study anxiety and autism is because it's treatable. And we know this in the general population as well as some of the studies that have been conducted so far with children with autism. So it's very promising. So the specific aim of our study here was to build on some of our previous work by conducting a randomized trial to compare our treatment, which we call Face Your Fear, versus treatment as usual. We have an independent evaluator who conducted pre- and post-assessments, and she was blind to condition. The participants were 52 children, well characterized with autism and anxiety. They were between the ages of 8 to 14, and they had to have their parents attend. Um, really, the only exclusion was severe psychopathology. So if they presented with something that we felt like was not appropriate for anxiety intervention, we referred them elsewhere. Otherwise, they participated in our studies. Our outcome measure was the ATIS, which is an anxiety, semi-structured anxiety intervention. The SCARED, which is more of an objective measure that has both parent and child report. And the CGI, which is commonly used as outcome measures in anxiety trials. It, there's a scale from one to seven, and our independent evaluator measures level of improvement pre-post. So here's our intervention. Uh, when we got into this work, we looked at the existing uh, CBT interventions, and we felt that they were too verbal and abstract for our kids, so we felt like we needed to create something that was more visual and more concrete. But we wanted to maintain the CBT components. So for us, we have core CBT components in our program, but we also have the information delivered in a more accessible or autism-friendly kind of way. Multiple choice lists, video modeling, lots of repeated practice, and so on. The program is 12 weeks, although now we've decided that 12 weeks was maybe not quite enough. We needed 14 weeks for dosage, but we have an hour and a half per time. The modality varies. Sometimes we meet with parents alone and children alone in a group. Sometimes we have parent and child dyads, and sometimes we have them in large group activities. The first six weeks is pretty much like a lot of other CBT programs. You identify what anxiety is, you identify the tools to help your body's reaction to anxiety, like deep breathing, we pay attention to automatic negative thoughts, and most importantly, we help kids use graded exposure or face their fears a little at a time. The second six weeks, or the second half of the program, is all about identifying specific goals and creating hierarchies for being able to face fears. Some of the common fears that our kids were facing were face your fear of the dark, face your fear of elevators, face your fear of talking to other people, face your fear of dying, and so on and so forth. Um, we have a booster session that is four to six weeks post-treatment. So, some of the results that we have so far, there were no pre-treatment differences between groups on any of our IQ measures, and I'm not sure if I said this is a high-functioning group, so average or above intelligence, but no differences in terms of IQ, anxiety severity, or their anxiety symptoms. Note that psychiatric complexity is pretty significant here for both groups. So the range for the TAU group was two to eight co-occurring psychiatric conditions as measured by the ADIS. Um, in addition to an autism diagnosis, and the range for face your fears or active treatment was three to seven. On our primary outcome measures, both when our independent evaluator looked at the scared and looked at the ATIS pre-post, again, blind to condition, she found significant, uh, there were significant findings in terms of reductions of anxiety symptoms um, for both measures. Another way to think about it is seven, almost 71% of the face your fears group demonstrated improvement compared with 27% in the treatment as usual group with an effect size of 0.84.
So overall, we're feeling positive about our findings. We feel like a modified CBT approach can be effective. Uh, some of the limitations are small sample size um, and a lack of attention control group, and we need to examine our follow-up data. Thank you very much. Thank you.